Keto Mojo. Precision Extra. We did a real-time comparison of the two meters going from fasting to after eating. We will show you how the meters match up and explain why your ketone readings change throughout the day. And for our loyal followers, you will be impressed by Keith's ketone numbers. He actually beat me. So here's today's scenario. We're going to get up at our normal early hour. We're going to test our ketones fasted. Then we're going to test them again right before we eat breakfast and then an hour after we finish eating breakfast. Right. Now, I have been fasting since 3 p.m. the day prior, and you actually only been fasting since 8 p.m. the day prior. And we tested at 6.30 a.m. Right. So I didn't even make it 12 hours. About 10 and a half hours. Yeah. Um, but here's the results at 6.30 a.m. Keith, ketones were higher than mine. I just did a spoiler alert. On the Keto Mojo meter, his ketones were 1.1 millimole per liter, and on the Precision Extra, it was 1.0. Uh, for me, Keto Mojo showed 0.9 millimole and Precision Extra showed 0.7 millimole. You I crushed smoked, it. <laughs> smoked it. All right, no gloating, but uh, congratulations. I feel I'm, I'm proud of you. Right. It's, and we shouldn't really be all wrapped up in ketone numbers, but you're, you have such a challenging metabolism. We got we to gotta take what we can get. Right. Well, so let's talk about your, yeah. you know, your meal and, and, and all that. I mean, you're, you were still in ketosis. Right. Well, and, and that's the point. You've, if you've been following us, I don't follow a keto diet. I get myself into ketosis for these testing days. Uh, I typically do low carb, more in the 70 to 80 carb range. Um, and, and, and yet my ketones are typically higher and there are reasons. But here, here are some factors that took place, right? If you heard Keith, he said that he finished eating at, eight, at 3, 30, 3 p.m. the night before. I finished at 8 p.m. So Keith was actually practicing early time-restricted eating or early intermittent fasting. And I actually had a, quite a, a late dinner. Uh, 8 p.m. Finishing eating by 8 p.m. Is, is actually pretty late for me. We were doing a jigsaw or a crossword, a puzzle. crossword puzzle because <laughs> we started doing a daily crossword puzzle together because there's like really nothing else to do in the world at this yeah. time. But anyway, um, it, it was a little bit tougher than our right. usual one and it pushed things back. We and finished it though. We did finish it and we got it, yeah, without having to check the answers. That's right. So not only was my dinner late, but it was also pretty high in protein. I had, it was a chicken based dinner with cheese on it. Um, my calories were 600 calories, fat was 38, carbs were just only six grams and protein was actually 58 grams. So I had 58 grams of protein 10 and a half hours before we tested. Right. And that could have uh, affected my keto. It's possible. And, and that is the exact same dinner that I had at 3, yeah. 3 p.m. Yeah, so. but because you practiced early time-restricted uh, eating, yours was down. It is, it is something for those of you that have trouble with right. getting your ketone readings up. So I typically will eat breakfast and then in a, within about six hours eat my, my dinner or my last meal of the day. Mm -hmm. And then I fast until the following morning. We both drank coffee and lots of it, no, unrestricted, just black coffee, but unrestricted. And we both exercised. You did your typical morning hike and I lifted with weights, um, my lower body, typical lower body uh, exercises. And the ketone readings? So um, my ketone readings on the Keto Mojo were 0.9 and on the Precision Extra were 0.9. Um, so they dropped a little bit mm -hmm. from, from previous. Yeah. Um, Becky's uh, readings were Keto Mojo 0.6 and Precision Extra 0.5. So that, that uh, yours actually dropped. You know, a, little, a little bit more, a little but bit more. I mean, yeah. we both, the point is that we, they both dropped. So here's another thing, right? Does exercise impact your ketones? Yeah. And I think it does. And yeah. I, I think, I think the exercise you did was more, um, you know, resistance, mm -hmm. weight, muscle, you know, yeah. heavy. So right. I think that in, in that case, you know, you could be, you know, converting some muscle glycogen. Mm -hmm. um, you could certainly be using ketones mm -hmm. uh, for that energy. You might even um, be going into, you know, gluconeogenesis mm -hmm. at that point. I think with mine, I'm just doing a, a two mile hike up on the mountain. It's not as obviously muscle intensive. 
Um, but it's still, you know, my body still needed that energy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it could be using those ketones. It, it could be, you know, uh, you know, there could be some gluconeogenesis going on. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I think, you know, in a nutshell, yeah, I do think exercise matters. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And you, you tend to do your resistance type exercises in your fed state. I right. do them in my fasted state. Right. But regardless, when you exercise, your body needs additional energy. Well, where's that energy coming from? Well, the ketones that are available, the glycogen that's stored or the stored glucose in your body, which is glycogen. Uh, when your body depletes those after your exercise, it needs to replenish them. And that could uh, cause the, the glucose your glucose numbers to go up. And the reason we're talking about glucose is when glucose goes up, basically ketones go down, which is why we're bringing right, that up. Right. And ketone production is not as quick of a process as making glucose. Yes. All right. So we had our delicious breakfast of, of eggs. Um, yeah, it was, it was eggs, bacon, and cheese. Uh, and, and we'll throw the numbers up because you had a little bit more than I had. But it was, for the most part, fairly high in fat and protein, but really low in carbs. Right. I make seven eggs and Becky takes what she wants off the plate. So we figure I get four eggs, she gets three eggs. And then Maddie gets a, a little bit. Sometimes Maddie yeah. gets a little bit. Yeah. 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 So then we tested an hour later yeah. after we finished. And, uh, and those numbers were pretty interesting. My numbers on Keto Mojo, I was at 0. 0.7 this time and on the Precision Extra 0. 0.7. Um, Becky on the Keto Mojo was 0. 0.8 and on precision extra 0.7. Yeah. So mine continually go down right. while yours kind of bumped up again. Right. Yeah, go figure, right? Crappy metabolism. Well, well, I'm not going to go that far, but I, I think, uh, you know, it, it could be due to our different metabolisms and specifically our level of insulin sensitivity. Right. Uh, we had the same amount. I had a little bit less, but I mean, you're a bigger guy than I am. So yeah. could it be that my body took the glucose that was from either the protein or the carbs in that and more readily stored it than, than yours? And so your glucose stayed a little bit higher, which knocked your ketones down a little bit. Huh? Yeah. Or, or was there some kind of latent effect of my exercise that my body made glucose, you know, for a prolonged period of time after that? Who knows? I mean, the, the bottom line is I was still in ketosis, which yes. is fantastic yes. for me. Yes. And I won two rounds out of three. Yes, but I won the last round. So really, it really it's who wins in the end, but we won't get, mm. <laughs> you don't need to. I think it's best two uh, out of three. No. That's the way it goes in tennis. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's draw our conclusions. First of all, the meter comparison, Keto Mojo to Precision Extra, does it matter? Uh, I, you know, they were close enough to each mm. other. I think that they were fine. And I think relative to themselves, they were perfect. They followed the same, you know, kind of, you know, graphs, ups and downs and yeah. everything. And it's just like, you know, we talk about, you know, with a, with a bathroom scale. Use the same scale every day. Don't use this scale and go to your neighbor's house and use air and your friend and use theirs. Your scale is, is most likely going to be accurate for you from one day to the next. Mm -hmm. It might not be the exact same number mm -hmm. as your neighbor's scale, but... Yeah, so whichever, you know, Precision, Extra, Keto, Mojo, I think they're both quality enough for, yep. a home, for home testing. Yep. Let's talk about some of our variables. Early time-restricted eating, early, you know, ending your meal earlier the night before, is that a factor? I mean, for me, that's the only way that I've been able to get myself into ketosis first mm -hmm. thing in the morning. Yeah. And I've been practicing this off and on for the last few months, kind of testing it, and and it is. I'm pretty consistently in ketosis yeah. first thing in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a challenging metabolism, uh, this is something that we have found uh, to be effective. Right. Do your food choices matter? Well, I think food choices do matter. Now, you and I had the same food, though, um, mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. prior to our testing right. and during this test. Mm -hmm. The exact same thing. I had, you know, I think we had the same portion yesterday, five hours apart. Um, we had slightly different portions this morning, but they were really pretty much, you know, the same thing. Um, I get a little bit more because I'm a bigger guy. Yeah. But even after I had protein in the morning, my ketones went up a little bit after eating, didn't yeah. they? 
Yeah, so um, the food choices absolutely matter, but if you're keeping your carbohydrates low, it's probably depending on your metabolism and how insulin resistant or insulin sensitive yeah. your body is. You may have had more of a protein need after lifting weights than Maybe. I did. It, it's, so it's, many variables. So many variables, yeah. yeah. It's really hard, and you know, your metab an individual's metabolism is like really the crazy, you know, X factor. Yeah. You, you, can, you just don't know. All right, and let's talk about exercise. Does exercise matter as far as your ketone levels? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it will impact your ketone readings. Your body is utilizing the energy substrates that it has available to it, glucose or ketones, um, to give you energy for that exercise. Uh, your body will then have to replenish them. So your body will go through some changes after exercise. Yeah. So, you mean you're in a constant state of flux, you know, yeah. all, all the time. Not, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. Yeah. So I do want to make a note about, um, so because we'll get some questions about, you know, the calibration of these meters, right? Yeah. So the Precision Extra used to require some little drops that you put on the thing just to make sure it's working. Makita Mojo supplies some drops to do the same thing. So here's the thing. It's not really calibration. You, don't, you can't change anything on these meters. It's really only... Um, letting you know if the meter is functioning or not. You can't change anything. You can't hit a button and calibrate it mm -hmm. to that drop mm -hmm. of, of you know, solution. It just is letting you know whether, you know, if the, you maybe need to meet, send the meter back. So there's no real thing for, you know, as far as calibration go. The, the Precision Extra reads the lot number on each strip. Um, the Keto Mojo does a similar thing. If you're getting strange readings and you want to, to just test it, you can get some of the calibration fluid and just make sure it's accurate. Okay. But that's about as good. That's about as good as you can go. All right. So. All right. There you go. So hope that uh, gives you some insights and uh, have a good week. We will see you in our next video. Please subscribe before you go. Thanks. Bye. Take two. Yep. All right. Keto Mojo. Take three. <laughs>